I guess that answers our questions. Coach, thanks for joining us. Of course. Appreciate your time. If you have a question for Coach, please raise your hand. It looks like we've got a question from Mitch Harper and then Jacob. Go ahead, Mitch. Yeah, Coach, uh, what, do you, what do you make of uh, pre- the challenge of preparing for a team that might be adding coaches to its staff at, at some point this week? Uh, what impact do you think that could potentially have on Saturday? I think, you know, the only pertinent impact is probably that it could be a distraction, just something, you know, us wasting time thinking about something that we have no control over. Um, you know, the, the, the rumors that we've heard about who might be coming back and helping out to Washington State, that's, those are guys that – that's where that system came from. That's Rolo's background. And, and so I think they'll continue to do the same. We had – I just finished talking to the team about this. Some of our best performances a season ago when we – uh, lost five or six coaches a week uh, on some of these occasions to COVID uh, measures. Those were some of our best performances. This game is about players. It's 99% about players and, and 1% about coaches. Our players know that. That's what we, that's what we want to believe. That's what we do believe. And our guys will be fine. What, what challenges does sch- schematically does the run and shoot offense pose for this 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 defense uh, is there any comparables that you face this season to that kind of run a similar deal to the run and shoot um, not exactly I think every week there there are some teams that are borrowing that that offense has been so successful for so long but in terms of the pure form of it what we're looking at is really the site adjustments that can expose any uh, any crack in the defense so any any time you give these guys enough area they will find it that's what they're so adept at and they will continue to hammer away at formations and motions and personnel groups until they find where the defense is is weak in some area and so defensively we just got to be as tight as we can possibly be get off the field as quickly as we can and uh, and limit those opportunities for them to find where the space is Okay, we have questions now from Jay Drew and then Norma. Yeah, Ed, um, a lot of, lots being made of losing Keenan Peely. I know you're not directly involved with the linebackers right now, but how do you think the other guys have adjusted? Is it, is it uh, being overplayed that they're struggling or, or are we missing something there? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, to, to underplay the uh, – the loss of Keenan Peely would, would be a mistake there. You know, I, I want to start with that. Like that's a, that's a huge loss. He was on the field um, a lot for us and in a critical role for a reason. And that reason is he was, he was uh, one of our best, one of our very best players with a bright future in front of him still. And uh, you know, I, that being said, I believe in the guys that we have in their abilities that any struggling, any struggle that we have right now going on, on defense, I'll put that on myself and the, and the coaching staff and not the players on the field. I, I think our players on the field are capable of playing what we consider elite defense, shut down defense. And, uh, and until we do that, um, you know, we, we as coaches need to put the burden on ourselves. And then just the, the onside kick, um, where was the breakdown there? Uh, I think the, you know, anytime there's a breakdown like that in a game, you give the opponent credit for the execution. And, uh, and again, take, put it on the, the coaching staff. That's, that's on us not to have our players um, ready for that moment. Um, you know, there's a, there's a big difference between, uh, for a coach, between saying, oh, I, I said that, I taught him that, and then, um, you know, did he learn that? And in that situation, our, we did not learn and perform to the level that we needed to to be successful. So, again, that's 100% on the coaches. Hey, Ed, um, now reviewing film from both um, the game, two games ago and then now this most recent game, is there anything that you can pinpoint that you could say, um, like, this is specifically what the defense needs to fix in order to have more successful games or, like, just know, like, this is where we're kind of lacking? Good, solid defense always starts with shutting down the opponent's running game. No matter how much the, the running game is the feature of the offensive style, it's still we want teams to have to play, um, you know, one handed, so to speak. And so it, it all begins with being sound and solid up front and taking away the run game. <laughs> and what's sort of the first step to get you back 
get the Cougars back to sort of those first five games and the, de- the defensive performances that you guys had specifically like against Utah and Arizona State? Um, I didn't, I'm sorry, but I didn't understand the question exactly. Like what's the first step you guys have to take to, to fix the mistakes from these past couple of games to be able to, to have more of that shutout performance like he did with against Utah or even against Arizona state. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, I, is that a follow-up question to playing better run defense? Just to, and how the defense can improve in general. Better run defense is the first step. Okay, next we'll have a question from Sean Walker and then a follow-up from Mitch. Hey, Coach, this actually probably bleeds a little bit uh, in, into sort of that last question because it, I mean, stopping the run tends, tends to lend so much towards physicality. Uh, being more physical than your opponent, that kind of thing. And it seems like for the first couple of games of the season, uh, this team really pride itself on being the more physical team and maybe kind of lost that a little bit. I'm thinking in particular uh, last week against Baylor even. Is there a way to kind of in the middle of the season sort of rebreed physicality into, the, into a team or, or kind of re-engage a team to to be more physical? And, and Or is it just kind of something that you have to sort of show them and go, hey, be more like that, I guess? I, yeah, I think um, it's 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 definitely not one thing. I can list off um, many things that that would allow us to uh, or encourage our guys to play more physical. I mean, one is to for the as coaches to get more people at the point of attack schematically, and obviously there are trade offs and, and risks and rewards, which um, you know anybody that plays video game football understands. You put some more guys one place, you have less guys to put in another. You only have eleven, but that's one way that we can get involved. We can also um, you know, I think there are always at any given point in the season, there are underutilized players on the bench that should play bigger roles. And we have to keep an eye out uh, for that. I think as coaches, we have to make sure that you know, as we get into the, the, the shape of the season and, and how important strategy is, that we don't forget that um, the technical part of the game is still the basic fundamentals of, of block shed and pad level and tackling well. And so we have to continue to coach and, and reward, coach the guys to do it well and reward the guys who are doing it well. Ed, after uh, Keenan went down, you guys switched Chaz from safety to linebacker. How do you feel he's, he's performed uh, in that position change? Well, I think Chaz has done a fantastic job. I think he's, uh, he's got a lot of athleticism. You know, we, I think we've referred to him before as a hybrid because he can play a lot of different positions for us. That utility has been critical as, as Keenan has gone down and we've had injuries other places on the defense and Chaz has been able to move around. There's, that's a big challenge uh, to go from one, one position to another. And uh, it's a selfless challenge. You know, obviously, a player is going to be much more comfortable playing one position over the course of a season rather than hopping around. So it's been a selfless de- decision on his part. And uh, we're, we're really proud of the way that he's approached the game. He's, he's constantly trying to get better. And um, he's, I would say he's in the same situation as our whole defense right now. We, we believe in ourselves. We believe in our ability. And the results have been unacceptable. And then on special teams, uh, Ryan Rico, we're planning on uh, expecting to talk to him here momentarily. And he's, up in, he's the guy that grew up in the Northwest. What do you remember about uh, recruiting Rico. I, I remember he was a, a guy that was actually in the recruiting services at Heralded Punter. Uh, what do you remember about his recruitment and, and the job that he's done thus far in his BYU career? Well, I tried to talk him into playing defensive end or tight end for us. That's the, that's the first thing. But um, you know, we, don't, we don't actually go out and recruit um, punters and kickers with a scholarship very often. I think we'd have to be in pretty dire straits. And, and generally, there are some guys around in the program that have the capability to kick and punt. So when uh, when we decided to offer him, it was for all the other reasons that he fit so well. I mean, a, a great athlete with a great frame, a big upside, multiple sports, and uh, we just felt like there was going to be a place where he could make a major impact for us. And then on top of that, the the academics and the, what he represented to his team and his community was just just the right kind of fit, like any other position player. And uh, I would be kind of uh, you know, overstating my uh, like um, punter evaluation prowess. If I told you that I like, I went out and checked out his technique and all that stuff. Like I, you know, I'm, 
I'm a sucker for length and speed and strength and good grades and character, and that's what he represented. Thanks, Ed. Coach, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate your time. You bet. <clears throat> We've got uh, Peyton Wilgar will be joining us next. If you have a question for him, if you'd raise your hand. 